A morning ritual. Ask yourself the following first thing in the morning. What am I lacking in attaining freedom from passion? What for tranquility? What am I? A mere body, estate holder, or reputation? None of these things. What, then? A rational being. What then is demanded of me? Meditate on your actions. How did I steer away from serenity? What did I do that was unfriendly, unsocial, or uncaring? What did I fail to do in all these things? Epictetus, Discourses, 4.6.34, 35. Any successful people have a morning ritual. For some, it's meditation. For others, it's exercise. For many, it's journaling just a few pages where they write down their thoughts, fears, hopes. In these cases, the point is not so much the activity itself as it is the ritualized reflection. The idea is to take some time to look inward and examine. Taking that time is what Stoics advocated more than almost anything else. We don't know whether Marcus Aurelius wrote his meditations in the morning or at night, but we know he carved out moments of quiet alone time and that he wrote for himself, not for anyone else. If you're looking for a place to start your own ritual, you could do worse than Marcus's example and Epictetus's checklist. Every day, starting today, ask yourself these same tough questions. Let philosophy and hard work guide you to better answers, one morning at a time, over the course of a life. I. January 22nd. The Day in Review. I will keep constant watch over myself and most usefully will put each day up for review. For this is what makes us evil that none of us looks back upon our own lives. We reflect upon only that which we are about to do. And yet our plans for the future descend from the past. Seneca, Moral Letters, 83.2 In a letter to his older brother Novitus, Seneca describes a beneficial exercise he borrowed from another prominent philosopher. At the end of each day he would ask himself variations of the following. Questions, what bad habit did I curb today? How am I better? Were my actions just? How can I improve? At the beginning or end of each day, the Stoic sits down with his journal and reviews, what he did, what he thought, what could be improved. It's for this reason that Marcus Aurelius's Meditations is a somewhat inscrutable book it was for personal clarity and not public benefit. Writing down Stoic exercises was and is also a form of practicing them, just as repeating a prayer or hymn might be. Keep your own journal, whether it's saved on a computer or in a little notebook. Take time to consciously recall the events of the previous day. Be unflinching in your assessments. Notice what contributed to your happiness and what detracted from it. Write down what you'd like to work on or quotes that you like. By making the effort to record such thoughts, you're less likely to forget them. An added bonus, you'll have a running tally to track your progress too. T. January 23rd. The truth about money. Let's pass over to the really rich how often the occasions they look just like the poor. When they travel abroad they must restrict their baggage, and when haste is necessary, they dismiss their entourage. And those who are in the army, how few of their possessions they get to keep. Seneca, on consolation to Helvia, 12. 1.b, 2. He author F. Scott Fitzgerald, who often glamorized the lifestyles of the rich and famous in books like The Great Gatsby, opens one of his short stories with the now classic lines, let me tell you about the very rich. They are different from you and me. A few years after this story was published, his friend Ernest Hemingway teased Fitzgerald by writing, yes, they have more money. That's what Seneca is reminding us. As someone who was one of the richest men in Rome, he knew firsthand that money only marginally changes life. 
It doesn't solve the problems that people without it seem to think it will. In fact, no material possession will. External things can't fix internal issues. We constantly forget this and it causes us so much confusion and pain. As Hemingway would later write of Fitzgerald, he thought the rich were a special glamorous race and when he found they weren't, it wrecked him as much as any other thing that wrecked him. Without a change the same will be true for us. T. January 24th. Push for deep understanding. From Rusticus. I learned to read carefully and not be satisfied with the rough understanding of the whole, and not to agree too quickly with those who have a lot to say about something. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations, 1.7.3 He first book of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations begins with a catalogue of gratitude. He thanks, one by one, the leading influences in his life. One of the people he thanks is Quintus Junius Rusticus, a teacher who developed in his student a love of deep clarity and understanding a desire to not just stop at the surface when it comes to learning. It was also from Rusticus that Marcus was introduced to Epictetus. In fact, Rusticus loaned Marcus his personal copy of Epictetus's lectures. Marcus clearly wasn't satisfied with just getting the gist of these lectures and didn't simply accept them on his teacher's recommendation. Paul Johnson once joked that Edmund Wilson read books as though the author was on trial for his life. That's how Marcus read Epictetus and when the lessons passed muster, he absorbed them. They became part of his DNA as a human being. He quoted them at length over the course of his life, finding real clarity and strength in words even amid the immense luxury and power he would come to possess. That's the kind of deep reading and study we need to cultivate as well, which is why we're reading just one page a day instead of a chapter at a time. So we can take the time to read attentively and deeply.